titration problem, there's actually a couple ways that you can be asked about a problem. So one way is the traditional kind of blitz type category, or we go in order, where, for example, I have, let's say we have an acid, say HA, and I have a KA for this acid of 3 times 10 to the minus 10, for example, and let's say I have 2 molar and uh, 1 milliliter of it, and then I add, say, KOH, and let's say there, this is 1.0 uh, molar, something like that. And then I can give you kind of a, a random problem, just depending on, because this is once before the traditional question, where I say, hey, let's add of the base, let's add one point five milliliters of it. Okay? Yeah, that'll work nicely. So then since you don't know what part of the titration curve we're in, you need to compare the millivolts. So you'll say, well, HA, that's 2.0 times 1.0 milliliters times molar, and this turns out to be 2 millimoles. Okay? And then you do it, so that would be, oh, this is a weak acid, by the way. How did I know that, how did, if I didn't tell you, how would you have known that HA is a weak acid? Yeah, the K is super tiny. Okay? So I actually didn't have to tell you that. Okay, KOH, you're going to do the same thing. 1.0, and I told you it's 1.5 milliliters, 1.5 millimoles. What region of the titration curve am I in? The buffer. Whenever the weak acid is in excess, there's more of the weak acid, then that's called the buffer region. The same would be true if there's excess weak, weak base. So, uh, there's, it depends how well you can think of this on your feet, but if, if you can't do the math in your head, which is kind of normal, it's easier just to write the reaction out. You can choose to write K or not write K, it doesn't matter. And so you'll get A minus plus H2O plus K plus. So you should be able to write a reaction like this all by yourself, where the acid and base are reacting, and then you just write the moles uh, underneath. So 2 and 1.5, zeros all over here. The smaller one, the limiting reactant, is going to all react away. And it's going to produce everything over here on the right hand side. The only one of relevance to us are the weak acid and the weak base. I'll circle those here and here. Since it's in the buffer region, I can use the Henderson muscle box. Somebody also asked me about that earlier, so this will do double duty. Henderson muscle box will give you this equation. You just have to use it. Okay, so you just need to make sure you know what to put where. One problem we had on the exam, which is a common problem, is people use the Henderson muscle box either when we're not in the buffer region and or when we don't have a buffer. This equation doesn't work in either of those scenarios. I know we use it now because my weak acid is in excess. So when that happens, I'm going to use the henderson hasselbach because I'm in the buffer region, and I do have a buffer. I have my weak acid right here and my conjugate weak base over here. So I just plug those in. pH is pK, the negative log of the Ka. I gave that in the problem, 3 times 10 to the minus 10, plus the log of the base. Uh, 1.5 over the acid, 0.5. Whatever that number is, is my pH. Okay, that's one style of problem. Okay, another style of problem is like the second, uh, after we did titrations, the second day I did a different style of problem. Uh, if you look back in the lecture notes, that those are usually focused around the midpoint and the equivalence point. And remember those notes I gave you at the last class? Those kind of things are what you'd want to have in your brain for that kind of problem. So for example, like let's take this one. Uh, first, a question if we just stick with this problem. 
would be find, find the pH at the midpoint. pH at the midpoint. That's a pretty common problem for the other style. It's where we go random order focused on the midpoint of the point. So all you need to know is pH equals pKa at the midpoint. And so that's going to just be the negative log of 3.0 uh, <coughs> to the minus 10, whatever that is. Uh, I might ask you what's the volume at the midpoint. Okay? So what's the volume, and I mean of strong base added. I mean of strong base added. Okay? So if that's true, remember, I'll get a different color pen here, for the weak acid, <coughs> that was HA, I had 2.0 millimoles. That number's not changing in the problem. So I know at the midpoint, my uh, strong base, which was KOH, oh, this is also a great question, would be how many moles? How many millimoles would the strong base be at the midpoint? Okay, say the number. One, yeah, halfway to the acid. Okay, so I know this, that could be another question. So if you knew the millivolts of the acid, we could ask you what the base was, it would be half. Okay, and so uh, to get to one, remember the mol molarity of the strong base was one molar, and I would just need to find the volume. I have the other two numbers, so the volume would just be one milliliter divided through. Okay? So that could be a common set of questions. The other kind of things we could ask you is about the equivalence point. Let's try some of those. The volume at the EQ point. What, and I mean the volume of the strong base at it. Strong base, which is the KOH. What would that be? What's the volume of the strong base at the equivalence point? Two. It's double. That number. So, for the midpoint volume of the strong base added is getting you halfway there. So if you just double that, you have the volume getting you to that equivalence point. And the reverse is true. If I knew this number, I just divide by two to get the volume at uh, this point right there. Okay, so what is for KOH? What's the concentration at the equivalence point? No, not the concentration. Let's do, what's the millimoles of KOH? That's a more likely question. It would equal what? Yeah, two. How did you know that, those of you who said that? It has to be when the millimoles of an acid uh, of the wheat equals the millimoles of the strong added, two and two, then you're at the EQ point. That's by definition what it means. The millimoles are equal. So you know the millimoles of strong base has to equal the millimoles of weak acid in this case. Okay? Uh, if I wanted to find the pH at the midpoint, what technique must I use? Uh, let me ask you this way. Can I use the henderson hasselbalch at the EQ point? No, horrible. Can I use the ice table? Yes. yes, that's definitely how I would do that. Do you want me to do that now? Yes. Yes? Okay. So, if you need to define, which is a common question, the pH at the EQ point, here's what you would do. Uh, and again, I'm going to assume it, if you're not going to be able to, you can't do the math in your head, it's best to write out the reaction. So, I'm going to write out the reaction. Because what I need from the reaction is the millimoles of the conjugate base. That's what the reaction will tell me. So this is just like before. You'll notice I'm writing the same reaction as I had earlier when I did my calculation at the, in the buffer region. And this is 2. This is 2, 0, 0, 0. Okay? I'm going to subtract off the 2. And notice these are totally neutralized. There's no weak acid left, and there's no strong base left. But it's not at a pH of 7 because I'm generating 
my conjugate base here, my conjugate weak base. So because of that, what I have circled in brown right there, I'm going to have to do an ice table because I have conjugate base. So I'm expecting the EQ point for this weak acid strong base titration to be above 7, the pH. And that should always be true. A weak acid strong base titration has a pH above 7 at the EQ point. So uh, we have to write the reaction. When you write the reaction, I'm going to add water. A lot of students have asked me, why do I add water at this point? Well, first of all, I have the A minus because that's the only thing uh, that's non-neutral left. So I have to have that. Why do I add water? Because I'm writing the general equation for a base. So you should know what's the general equation of an acid and a base. Let's, let me give you the page number in my reader for that, just because it's a common reaction to be writing down. So let me flip over there. That's on... Here. Uh, it's on a couple pages, but page 63 is the one I found first. These two reactions, anytime you're finding pH using the ice table, it's probably going to be one of those two reactions. Okay? So I wrote the one for the base, which is uh, 2A. So make sure you can write both of those by heart. And so the base grabs a proton and water loses a proton. Ice. And then ignore water. And this number is 2 divided by what? Yeah, what the heck is the volume? The volume of the acid originally was 1. And then what did we say is the volume of the strong base? Oh, here it is. Yeah, 2. So 1 plus 2, total of 3 right now. So this is millimoles on the top and 3 milliliters on the bottom. Remember in the ice table, I recommend always using molar. And in the stoichiometry part of the problem, which is this in blue, I recommend always using moles. You don't have to do it that way, but it usually uh, will avoid you having issues. All right. There we go. So 2 thirds minus x, x, and x. And so you just say k. Hey, what's the subscript here? A or B? B. B. Because, how did you know that? Yeah, it's a base here. This is a base. So it has to be KB, uh, which would just be KW divided by KA. Remember, KA was given equals x squared over 2 thirds minus x in our problem. And we're going to assume x is small. Oh, by the way, it's something I forgot to tell my class, but I'll tell you, there will be a place on the final that we ask you to justify your assumption, if you make one. Okay? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I like, saw the light go out of you. <laughs> okay, it's not a big deal. There's two ways to do it. Let me just show you the easier way, okay? If you want to refer to my reader, uh, the two ways to do it are, let me find the page number. It's not hard. It's on page 7. I'm going to show you the easier of the two ways. All you do is say M over K is greater than 100. So in our case, M, 2 thirds, over K, KB, so that would be KW, 14, over RK, uh, times 10. That has to be greater than 100, which it should be for this case. Okay? That, that would be it. That justifies your assumption. Okay. So X is small, you just solve for X. And then X, once you have X, is it equal to what important concentration? Yeah, the OH, because that's what's in the ice table. Check where my fingers are here, the OH. So that's equal to OH. And you'll just go from there, you'll say, well, POH is the negative log of the OH. And then pH is 14 minus pH. And 
There you go, you have the pH. Which better be, this is a good example to solve at home, and you better get a number greater than seven. Okay, so there's titrations. We did titrations. Let me say a little bit about a curve. And we just did buffers too. And let me tackle both of those out. The curve, you should know what all the curves look like. Was oh, there a question? Yeah. You can use a 5% rule too. That's the other option. It just involves a slightly more math, but that would be a fully valid option. <laughs> Yeah, that's the 5% rule. That's the other option. I guess you're not in my class. Yeah, so there's two options. This one involves a little less mass, and this are, there's a 5% rule. The problem with the 5% rule is you have to have X before you do the calculation. My rule, or the other rule, is not my rule. The one I prefer, you don't need X, you can do it before you start the problem. Yeah. Whatever, I don't care. Fine. Yeah. I used to do that rule exclusively until I realized this rule was faster. So that's why you do it. Uh, this is what the curve would look like. You should be able to draw it and label it. Here's the midpoint, the EQ point. And I do all of these in class. Here's the strong base region. And here's the buffer region. So should be able to graph that sort of thing. All the strong, all the weak acid, strong base titrations will look like this. All right. Uh, oh, okay. This. And why did I go from here to here? Okay, one more time. So this was this reaction because those are the two things reacted. Notice they're gone. So I can't have them in the reaction anymore. Not in the reaction. What's left? Oh, this is only one of significance. So that has to be in the reaction. Because it's only thing of significance, I'm writing the general equation for a base which is this reaction. So okay? Yeah. Alright.